Hello and welcome to another edition of History Science Fiber. I'm Zoe McDonnell, I'm a biologist, and today we are dying with the polypore known as Pycnoporellus fulgens. So what is a polypore? What does it do? Why does it exist? And how do we get color from them? Let's get started. Now, polypores are also known as shelf fungi or bracket fungi and are the fruiting bodies of much larger organisms that live within soils and trees. These structures have the same function as other mushrooms, which is to reproduce by making spores. Now, in general, these polypores come in a variety of different shapes and sizes, but almost all have tubes and pores on the underside for dispersing spores. Now, this particular polypore comes with a conservation warning it's very likely that there are actually different species which are all currently lumped in together as Pycnoporellus fulgens. One of the reasons we think this is that in some areas like parts of Europe, it has incredibly strict habitat requirements which include large tracts of old growth forest. They're extremely rare and legally protected, so please do some digging before you harvest any. In other areas, like where I am in Western Canada, it's fairly common and grows in second growth forests and even urban areas. The polypore we're dying with today, for example, was collected from a spruce in my neighborhood. I did take the extra step of confirming with a local mycologist everything I just told you before I harvested. And even then, we are dying with half of a polypore. I wanted to leave the rest so it could keep making spores. So Pycnoporellus fulgens is an orange polypore, which can be found growing on both deciduous and conifer trees, but is most often found on fallen spruce or stumps of spruce. On the underside, it has angular pores, which look stretched out at the base, almost like teeth. It has distinct fan-like caps and is most often seen growing in association with Fomatopsis pinnacola, which is another polypore. So I harvested and used it right away, but you can also chop it up and dry it if you have a dehydrator and store until you're ready to go. So the first thing I did was to chop it up into pieces and then weigh it. From there, I decided to use a two liter glass jar with one of my usual paint mesh bags. These are available cheaply in one and five gallon sizes at most paint stores and they are reusable and make dyeing really easy. I placed a one gallon size bag into the jar. I then added my chopped up Pycnoporellus. At this stage, I added slightly less than a tablespoon of vinegar. Many of the polypores produce warmer and brighter colors with the addition of a little acid. I then simmered it for an hour and let it cool. While this was simmering, I got my fiber ready. This time I made up two wool hanks, one premordented with alum at 16% weight of fiber and one premordented with iron at 6% weight of fiber. The total weight of my fiber was 22 grams or about 0.7 ounces. So my fungi to fiber ratio was two to one. Or to put it another way, I used twice as much weight of fungi as I did fiber. I then pre-soaked my fiber in water to help it sink into the dye pot and absorb color more evenly. Once the jar of dye stuff was cool enough, I removed the bag and added in my fiber and brought it back up to a simmer for an hour, stirring occasionally. Once it had cooled for several hours, I removed my fiber and gave it a rinse. Now, 
In the end, the Alan Moore Tinted Hank came out a warm beige with just a hint of pink. It's quite a subtle color, but it is unusual. The Iron Mordented one came out a medium brown, which is a very similar color to what many plant dyes can give, which are all going to be more common and easier to get in larger quantities. All the yarn smells amazing, like a rainy day in the forest. I hope this was useful. Get out there and see what colors you can find. And make sure to like and subscribe for future videos on how to forage and dye with mushrooms, lichens, and plants.